Hello, welcome to another video. This is the fourth USB power adapter video. There's a playlist or links on screen or in the description to previous ones. It looks like there's gonna be a bunch of videos in this series. Here is the Elogrip R1820 DPD20AC wall socket USB adapter. Let's get into it. This has some modern features like power delivery, so it can bump the voltage up for some faster charging modes. As we will see, it is also somewhat crippled in the power delivery per port. First impressions, Cardboard box that's easy to open. The box has a user manual product as well as uh, some single use plastic wrapped face plates. It's a nice addition to have the face cover included though since uh, these are custom to the socket. This is a 36 watt total capable device and I think it's gonna get there without any problems. All that power though is not available on one port. I will be looking at several different factors related to the power adapter performance and specifications. We can see that the receptacle and USB are UL safety listed. The product also has the FCC logo on it, which means it must have gone through some electromagnetic radiation and immunity testing. I purchased on Amazon and there's a link in the description as usual. The socket is fairly inexpensive at 27 US dollars. We'll see if that lower price aligns with the performance. On a scale, the USB outlet weighs 206 grams with the faceplate. The packaging weighs 25 grams. The supplied user manual goes over installation and basic safety instructions. Uh, it's vague on efficiency, power output, distribution of power across the outlets, voltage output, etc. So not a, not a lot in terms of specifications. There's obviously no regulation on this part of the market. Type A QC 3.018 watts and Type C PD 2.0 plus QC 3.018 watts doesn't tell me a lot. Let's get this thing installed into an electrical box and powered up. Here you can see my test box with a cut up cord and a few ferrules on the end of the wires to make connections easier. All of these USB wall outlets are quite large and don't have a lot of room in the electrical box for anything except incoming wires. These aren't great for use in outlet boxes that have any extra cabling in them. These will also produce some heat so ventilation needs to be considered as well. So one wire in the electrical box where these get installed or an extra large box. I did a video explaining some power quality metrics. There's a link below. In general, I will just state what is good and what is a bad number. Let's plug it in and check out the idle power consumption. Give it a minute to settle out here. So first, looking at the idle power in VAN, it isn't great. The power factor is very poor at 0.2, but this is also only at 0.15 watts. These results are fairly mixed since the THD is also not that bad at these lower levels, probably because of some extra AC line filtering in the larger space. Here we can see an ultra low test load connected directly across the output. The device starts to use a little more power now that it has some load connected. Changing this over to the USB decoy, we can see five volts, nine volts, and 12 volts are the available options. 15 watts on the USB-C port is no problem at 5 volts. Time to turn the voltage up. 18 watts at 9 volts. 18 watts at 12 volts. Still working great. Let's see how far it will go. 19. 20. 21. 22. 23, still going, and now 24 watts is where the cutout happens, so the device does have some extra watts to be squeezed out of one port. 23 watts continuous is within the specification of the USB power delivery specification and is within the rating for the port itself, so this overcurrent level is acceptable. To test both loads simultaneously, I am using a less accurate USB meter to set the extra load on the USB-A port. This allows me to go to the full 36 watt rating, and the device handles the full 36 watts with no problem. In terms of overall results, this isn't a bad performer. We can see it likes to operate on the higher side of the load to achieve the best efficiency. This device wants to charge at 18 plus watts. Power factor is typical, and the THD is typical as well. 
The device has high idle power consumption, which is a concern, but this only translates to about 20 cents extra per year on a consumer electric bill. This will cost a bit more money to have in your wall all the time versus some of the competitors. If you were in industrial situations, the costs will be even higher because of the high VA usage. In summary, this adapter is adequate. I already know there are some better options. Here is a summary of the USB power adapter so far. As we can see, the Ella Group isn't the best for in-wall USB sockets. It isn't as good as the Anchor either. The high VA usage on idle and the higher power usage are drawbacks. It does have overcurrent protection, which makes it a safe bet. The overall power is higher since it's a higher power class device, but in general, power quality is comparable to similar devices. When comparing this device to its competition, we can see that it has the second highest idle power consumption, but it has slightly better power quality while doing so. The average real power is higher since this is a 36 watt rated device. The power quality is near the higher end on average under use. Most of the time this sits in the wall idling though. On a graph, the lower THD helps the idle power quality score, but the high idle power consumption puts it towards the far left side of the graph. It broke free of the cluster of other USB adapters. Under load, the device also fares better, scoring near the top of the list compared with similar power adapters. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, click the buttons. You know you want to. The best way to help creators like me is to share our content with others. Join me for another video in the near future. I don't know how many more of these there is to go, probably unlimited. Thanks again, and bye.